Okay, so do you understand algebra? Well, if the answer is yes, that is awesome. And uh, if that is the case, you should have no problem doing this problem right here. So uh, basically the problem would be simplify this rational expression. Now, I don't want to really kind of give you too many hints here because I want to give you a full opportunity to do this all on your own. If you think you could do this problem, go to put your answer into the comment section. I'm actually going to show you the correct uh, answer in just one moment, and then I'll, uh, I'm going to walk through step by step actually how to simplify this rational expression. And uh, what we're talking about here is like algebra one. So if you're like a pre-algebra student, uh, you may not have seen all the skills here, but if you want to try this problem, you can go ahead and do so. Again, I'm going to explain all of this in just one second. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I absolutely love helping people learn mathematics. I'm going to tell you right now, all of you can be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that have a tough time in math. There is no such thing as a bad math student, okay? So if you are really struggling in math, please do not give up hope. Here's the three things you need to be successful in math, okay? The first is you gotta be willing to work hard. There are no shortcuts. So if you're kind of looking for an easy way uh, out, uh, it doesn't exist. You gotta work hard to learn mathematics. The second thing you need is encouragement. And this is particularly important for those of you that are having a tough time in math. You need to kind of have a sense, you know, um, that if you do work hard, you're going to be successful. But you need this third thing, and that is you got to have access to great math instruction. Okay, there's nothing more important, uh, more important than learning from someone you actually understand. Okay, and there's nothing more frust uh, frustrating than being in a class or learning from something that, you know, is just way, you know, too confusing, okay? You're never gonna learn it in that manner. Now, math is a very technical subject and it can be taught in a very technical way. And I'm not trying to, um, you know, make any math teachers out there look bad, okay? What you have to do is find a teacher you like and understand. When I teach math, I like to explain things in, in a kind of language that anyone and everyone can understand without watering down the concepts and skills that you need to know. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that has math on it that you're getting ready for, something like the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also gonna leave links to my math notes in the description as well. Uh, one of the uh, quickest ways to start improving in math is to improve your notes, okay? But in the meantime, you can use mine if you like it, just in case your notes are not up to snuff. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer here. We have 2x squared minus 18 over x squared minus x minus 6. What do we need to do? Well, this is going to involve factoring. And when we simplify this rational expression, here is the answer. Okay, you should have this right here, two times x plus three over x plus two. Now, if you uh, multiply this and you got six x, or I'm sorry, not six x, if you wrote two uh, x plus six up in the numerator over x plus two, that's uh, perfectly acceptable as well. But uh, anyways, this is the answer. Okay, so how well did you do? Well, hopefully you got this right. And if you did get this right, then I might go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that you know how to simplify rational expressions. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? You can certainly have bragging rights because you knew how to do this problem. Okay, so again, we are talking about algebra one. So if you're at the algebra two level, college algebra level or beyond, you know, this is, should be a pretty easy problem. But let's go ahead and get into this right now. Now, um, as I explain this, if there's things that you don't understand, because I can't uh, have complete full instruction on all the elements of this problem. But uh, here's um, what I'm gonna recommend. I'm gonna suggest that you check out my Algebra One course. Of course, if you're at the Algebra Two level, I teach this stuff in there as well. But I would say, uh, you know, point you towards my Algebra One or Algebra Two level if you don't understand anything here. And probably, 
uh, what uh, most students are going to have difficulty with is factoring. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to factor the numerator and denominator. So that is what we need to do. So you're going to have to have some factoring skills. Now, if you didn't know how to do this problem, I'm kind of, you know, uh, giving you direction here. So I'm saying, okay, what we need to do is factor the numerator and denominator. So you can see right now, you kind of, you know, check to see if you can, in fact, you know, factor an expression like this and factor a trinomial like this. Okay, you go to get, you know, go ahead and work on this problem with me if you're, you know, we're confused on what to do. But the first step is you want to factor the numerator and denominator. So let's notice here. I'm calling this a rational expression. And uh, anytime you hear this word rational in algebra, you want to basically think of fraction. Okay, that, I mean, there's a more technical explanation to it, but you can see here I'm dealing with a fraction, but I wouldn't really describe this as a fraction. This right here is a fraction. So uh, when you have variables involved, polynomials and whatnot, you're going to want to describe this as a rational expression. Of course, we have rational equations. So those of you that are taking algebra, you'll see that word everywhere, rational. Again, you want to be thinking in terms of fractions. So uh, just thinking about fractions here in a second, the reason why we need to factor is the following. Okay, so this is kind of an equivalent problem, uh, but we're using numbers here. Okay, so if I told you to simplify this fraction, okay, what I'm asking you to do is to reduce it. In other words, write it in a simpler way or the simplest way. So we have 20 over 30. So most of you are like, oh yeah, that's just going to be two thirds, right? And that is the answer. But how did you do that? Well, really what you're doing is you're factoring the numerator and denominator. So let's just kind of think about this for a second. So 20, you can write as the factors of two times 10, right? So the product of two and 10 is 20. So two and 10 are factors of 20. So the process of, of taking 20 and breaking it down into its uh, factors is called factoring. Okay, so we don't really talk about that, but it's important that you understand these basic concepts. So 30, uh, we can factor into these factors, three and 10. Now, again, there's different ways you can write these factors, but uh, these particular factors, you can see here, we have like factors in the numerator and denominator. Okay, so that's what you want to do is you want to factor the numerator and denominator with the hope that we can find like factors because when we have like factors, one factor in the numerator, one factor in the denominator, they're exactly the same. We could cross cancel those and we're just left with whatever remains. In this case, of course, it's two thirds. So you have to understand you know, this basic concept in order to do this. This is why I'm trying to factor this. We're like, okay, if we can factor this uh, this numerator and this denominator, then we can find some like factors. Maybe we can cross cancel some stuff. That's the whole idea. So let's go ahead and do this now. All right, so let's uh, focus in on the numerator first. So we have 2x squared minus 18. So I'm thinking to myself, hmm, 2 and 18, uh, these both have 2 in common. So the first thing you want to always do uh, when you're looking at factoring, okay, trinomials or polynomials in algebra is to factor out the greatest common factor. So I can write this this way, two parentheses x squared minus nine. Okay, so again, anytime you're looking to factor something, always ask, are there anything, any opportunities to factor out a greatest common factor? If, they, if there are, you want to go ahead and do that. All right, so that's the numerator. We're going to get back to the numerator in a second. Let's go ahead and take a look at the denominator. So the denominator is what? X squared minus X minus six. So this is what we call a quadratic trinomial, okay? And this is a big deal, how to factor trinomials in algebra, definitely at the algebra one level. So the factors of this quadratic trinomial are these two binomials, X minus three times X plus two. Now, if you don't know why this is, uh, how we can factor this quadratic trinomial into these factors here, then I would say that this is a uh, red alert, you know, five alarm uh, uh, algebra emergency, okay? You need to immediately go back and brush up on factoring. You literally cannot pass an algebra course without being very good at factoring. 
Okay, so that's why I'm not going to fully get into it now, because if I just kind of quickly went through this, it's not going to do it. Uh, do you? Um, it would be doing you kind of a disservice to kind of quickly tell you how to do this. So you need to follow up on how to factor. Again, I would suggest that you check out like my algebra one course. I do have additional videos on my YouTube channel and all this stuff as well. Okay, so but if you knew that the factors that x squared minus x minus six can be broken up or into uh, x minus three times x plus two, that's very very good. Okay, so we're not done yet. So let's go back and revisit this numerator, okay? So here's the deal. When you factor something, okay, you always wanna ask yourself, whatever I just did, whatever I just factored, remember the numerator factored out the greatest common factor of two. Sometimes you can factor the factors, okay? So here, this two times x squared minus nine, this right here happens to be a difference of two squares, okay? Difference of two squares situation, a squared minus b squared for all of you out there. And that's equal to a plus b times a minus b. Again, uh, if you're not quite sure what I'm talking about, you know, this is a five alarm factoring emergency. You gotta uh, figure this stuff out. But anyways, x squared minus nine, we can factor as x minus three times x plus three. And of course we can't forget about our, our uh, greatest common factor, which is two. All right, so our numerator, we can factor like this. Now this thing is completely factored and our denominator is completely factored. So that is what we need to do first when we're trying to uh, simplify a rational expression is to completely factor as far as we can go. And then we look for opportunities to cross cancel like factors. So let's just scan the numerator and denominator. And you're like, oh, we have an x minus 3 up here and an x minus 3 right there. So we can go ahead and just cross cancel one for one. And what's left? We're going to have a 2, an x plus 3. That would be our uh, uh, numerator. And then we have an x plus 2 down here and our denominator. And we are done. Okay, so I would say this problem is kind of an easy level algebra one problem. Now, a lot of you might be saying to yourself, easy, this was difficult, this was challenging. Well, if you thought this was like a difficult problem, that's probably a pretty good indication that uh, you need some serious algebra review. Again, you can learn this stuff, okay, but it requires work, right? And that's the thing, that's the message I try to bring to uh, those of you out there that follow me. And again, if you're watching my video right now, I definitely appreciate that, but I'm trying to bring reality to to you guys. I'm like, you know, uh, I see these things out there, um, you know, sometimes I, you know, I see them on uh, different videos or, you know, just on the internet and I see these, hey, learn math real quick, one, two, three, da, 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 da. There, you know, you can learn little aspects of math real, real quick, but if you really truly want to master math, and okay, that's the only way to want to learn math because, you know, if you if you learn math a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there, you're never going to be able to pull the pieces all together, okay? And again, I've been doing this for not for years, but for decades, okay? So I know what works and what doesn't work. And I do know, I have absolute conviction that all of you can, if you put in the effort, if you like and understand my teaching style, you can build yourself up to understand anything. But this is important stuff if you expect to succeed in algebra, which hopefully you do. And I will certainly uh, would want to uh, help you out along uh, the, uh, that particular journey. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.